This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve. And welcome in. How you doing? I hope you had a fantastic Easter, or should I say, Joyous Pack, Froa Weihnachten, Happy Easter, and whatever other language you want me to say, let me know. But uh, Happy Easter, everybody. I hope you had a great stuff. Hope you had plenty to eat, and I hope you've been around family, because family is the main important thing. And poets, you are family here, you know that. And if you're just subscribing, hey, start writing, commenting down below, and become one of the poets. I will acknowledge the poets of the week at the end of the show. So stick around for that. But the poets of the week, I will personally let you know who they are. Right, moving on. As I say, family is everything, and uh, we're stopping the show right now. Boom. There is some tragic news coming out of Europe for Cristiano Ronaldo and his wife Georgina. Apparently they have twins, but apparently only the little girl has survived. I don't know too many more details and I don't want to go into that too far, but let's just pray for Cristiano Ronaldo and his wife for their loss. And uh, there is a press release. If you go online, you'll find that, but um, they're glad that they can move through this with the... Uh, with the little girl that's been born so spare a place in your heart for Ronaldo and his lady there Georgina for losing that child that is absolute tragic you never as a parent want to lose a child I am a parent like you guys so tragic news for Ronaldo and Georgina like I say have a little prayer for them place in your heart and uh, let's just think of that little angel and it was a little boy that passed away so sad moment let's take a second Okay, let's move on with the show. I'm slowly going to pick up gear because when I talk about stuff like that, I'm not, f I'm not fake. Um, what you get is real, you know that, guys. And uh, I think that's absolutely sad. So sad. Sad, really sad. Anyway, to make up for that sadness, let's talk about something really positive and let's get back on track. And let's talk about Richie Larea. You know I've had Richie on the radar for quite some time, yeah? Well, Richie does no longer need to be waiting for minutes, because it happened, it happened, oh yes, it happened. Nottingham Forest, setting it up, were playing West Bromwich Albion in the Championship, the EFL, and that is a really tough league. There's a lot of physical play, probably one of the most physical leagues I know. The Premier League is not that physical. Anyway... Forest are playing West Bromwich Albion at, I call it the city ground. I love to give the football grounds the historic name, right? You can call it the the Reebok Stadium or the Umbro Stadium or the Umbro Stadium or the Adidas Stadium or the whatever stadium, yeah? But I like to retain the historical name. Nottingham Forest is a city ground. City ground. Brian Clough, famous. That's where I fell in love with the Forest Club. I'm not a Forest fan, but fell in love with that whole Forest history and the, and the great coach. Anyway, Richie Delorea doesn't start today. Sitting on the bench. Half-time comes along. Forest are 3-0 up. I'm thinking, hey, this is good. If I'm Stevie Cooper, the coach, this is going to give me the opportunity to let Ricky Delorea play for Forest. Well... We're waiting and we're waiting and time is ticking on, time's ticking on. Forrester owning the game. It's one. They're three nil up from half time. And sort of like seventy seven sort of like seventy six, seventy seven minutes, I can see somebody warming up and it looks like Richie Larea. Indeed, it's Richie Larea. And on seventy nine minutes, in he comes to the game to wear his first minutes as a Nottingham Forest player in the English Championship. And I tell you what, uh, the crowd really gave him a great reception. You should have seen this. If you want to watch that uh, game, go, you probably could see it at YouTube somewhere, but go to Dazen. They've got a great, great, great um, 90 minutes on that game. I watched it there. I know a couple of you guys did too. And uh, as soon as Richie came in, the crowd's like, whoa, off their feet. And they're like, we know this guy. We've been waiting to see this guy. And they're chanting his name as he's coming in the game. It's absolutely thrilling. It's, it's just like so, oh, Canada, we got to live this moment. And I mean, Richie came on and uh, I've got to say, he's making runs down the right side. He's replaced Spence. And Spence is a U21 England international. So he's doing really good. Phenomenal little player, Spence. 
and he's doing great things for Forest. And that's who Richie has replaced on the 79th minute. Richie comes in, he's making loads of runs down the wing, and you can see uh, he's done about 20 runs, and, and the crowd are like, why don't you pass to him? Pass to him! The crowd are waiting for him to get on the ball, just like he does for Canada, right? Yeah? Okay. So the crowd literally know who he is from Canada's World Cup qualifying and TFC play, and they're glad they got him, and they know his name, and at the end of the game, when it ends 4-0, Richie's put in a great display, he's let himself know who he is, and he's let the whole world know who he is. He's up to that standard and more. He didn't look out of place. He, in fact, he looked like he'd been there all his life. He played a phenomenal 14 minutes. So number 14 at Nottingham Forest gets 14 minutes on his debut at home. The fans love him. They're chanting his name as the game is shutting down. And I tell you what, that is 100% fantastic for this country. Because Richie, I tell you man, I got a feeling he might get some more minutes after that because he showed his hand up front what they didn't have with Spence. And Spence is a top youngster. Well, Richie's got that experience. And I tell you what, I'm looking for more for Richie at Nottingham Forest. It's absolutely phenomenal to see his gut in minutes. And guys, I've been on this for four months waiting for that time to come. And you know what? I've been persistent. I haven't dropped the ball. I've been there. Now you know. And get on to Daz and watch that. Well, get on to uh, somewhere you can see the uh, highlights of Forest and West Brom from Monday. And uh, you'll love it. But hey, I tell you what, he looked great. I was so happy for him. I'm still buzzing about Richie on the field. And um, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now, quickly, predictions. FA Cup. Well, I said Man City should be the team that could shade it, but Liverpool are definitely capable of taking it. Liverpool took it. Second semi-final. Unfortunately, Crystal Palace fans, I did offend a couple of Crystal Palace fans. I apologise. When I said little chance, I didn't mean to offend you guys, okay? I was just saying, in my mind, Chelsea had the chance to get through and Palace would have to have a little bit of luck. That's all I meant. It wasn't anything personal, so apologies, Palace fans, but I did say Chelsea would win. They did. Two out of two for the FA Cup gun in the MLS. TFC, and if you look in the corner there, there's a Red Patch Boys scarf right down there in the corner. Anyway, I'll bring that out soon. I said TFC were going to win over unbeaten Philadelphia Union. Well, Philadelphia are not unbeaten anymore, hence another great, great win for TFC, putting them up to fifth in the East. And then on the other side, I was looking at Montreal taking on Vancouver. I told you Montreal was going to take it. It was 2-1 on the day, by the way. Tough game, but 2-1 is what it was. And uh, so we're 4-4 four four on the weekend on predictions. So there you go. More to come. We definitely will have more to come. Now, story to close down. A story about yours truly. And we'll slow it down a little bit. When I was a young kid, I lived in the Midlands of England at one stage. I lived in a place called Stoke-on-Trent. And in that area of Stoke-on-Trent, there's two major big clubs. One is Stoke City, and the other one is Port Vale. Now, as a little boy, I'm going to put the picture up. As a little boy of 12 to 13, I'd walk about five, six miles, walk, to the football ground. And I had no money to get into the ground. I would then, with a couple of my friends, sit on top of a wall and look over the stadium wall to watch the ground. Now, we could only see maybe maybe a third of the field. We couldn't see anything really big. We could see a third of the field, yeah? But us kids, it was like we were watching soccer's gods play on the green grass. And it's like, wow. I still remember the feeling. I still remember being on that wall as a little kid. The funny thing is we were sitting on a wall that had a, like a 60, 70 foot sheer drop on one side and about a good 20 foot on the other side. You wanted to land on the 20 foot side. But that's what we would do to watch a game of soccer as kids. And we watched games for, well, I'd say a couple of seasons as kids. And in that picture, there's two white houses. And this is the strange, funny thing about it. The guy's name is Andy Hughes, a mate of mine in that area. Andy actually bought that white house, yeah, furthest 
to the to the left in the picture he bought that house specifically so he could sit in his bedroom windows with binos and watch the complete game that only lasted until Port Vale redeveloped the ground but um, needless to say we didn't pay to watch the game and years later I would be training and playing inside that football ground and I'm not kidding you there's a true story something else about yours truly and I have the paperwork to prove that story too I have eventually my release papers as well as a professional from that club great memories great time wonderful part of England but uh, hey there's a story okay guys coming Wednesday I'm going to give you some more but uh, there's some more of me but at the end of the day please let's spare a thought for Ronaldo and his lady Georgina okay guys and I did say that I was going to thank all the poets from this week and they are reading out Xavier with an X Lance Maurizio Maurizio I'm going to be in touch and I will be in touch uh, Scotty Granville Trouty McTrout Trout Spike Ferrelli and Murray Lynn guys you're the top poets of the week and if you just subscribed comment down below guys thanks a lot have a great great week talk to you Wednesday ciao ciao tutti Three, two, one. This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve.